Okay, this is Pete's Barrel House Rag. And this is a good tune for uh, learning some of the licks and phrases of people like Reverend Gary Davis and Blind Blake. And, but it's also very good for learning some uh, cage variations in a ragtime blues format. So before you sort of uh, dive into the tablature, it's good to get familiar with the structure of the song. Most of the verses here is eight bars long and contain the chord progression of C, E, A, D7, and G. C, E, A, D7, G. And for the most part throughout this song, those of the chord uh, progression will be playing. So to start off with our first verse, let me just play this slowly. We're using an alternating bass as our background, or as our background for most of the chords. Just a regular C chord alternating the bass, and I go to an E. Then two bars of A7 using the long A chord here. Then a D7, um, and I'm going to use a version of D7 that looks like a C7. Actually using that C7 shape with the open first string, which essentially turns it into a D9 chord. walk up from the G and you've heard this in songs like Alice's Restaurant, uh, Blackbird by uh, Paul McCartney, excuse me, You're just that little walk up going up on two strings and then I finish up with a G chord here kind of based off of a bar chord shape uh, but I'm just playing the top four strings okay so that's our first verse Now these next verses are going to be that same chord progression. Um, we'll play with it a little bit as we go though. The first variation starts off exactly the same way. But then when I go for an E7, instead of going to this first position E, I'm going to do a D shape. And this is a, here's your caged idea starting to show up. Uh, a D shape E7 chord. So you can see in these fingers here, I have a D shape, a D7 shape, adding my first finger to the uh, four string at the second fret. And there's gives me my alternating bass between the six and four string. And from there, it's an easy shift to get to my A7 chord or my long A chord. doing something there that uh, may sound a little discordant. I get rid of my bar, but I keep my first finger where it was. I throw my third finger on the second string, fourth fret, and bend this note up a little bit. And that sounds, when you play it slowly, it sounds not very pretty, but... If you're playing this at a quick tempo, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, next, I go to a D7. And this version of the D7 is essentially the same as the previous version. In other words, a C shape. But I shift it around a little bit. So I take my third finger from the fifth string and place it on the third string which frees up my pinky to be able to play the first string at the fifth, fr fifth fret. I'm alternating my 
high bass between the fifth and fourth string. Okay, and then I'm going to do a series of chords where I'll do these rolls. Now what's going on there? This is a G7 chord. I'm um, uh, barring four strings at the third fret, having my middle finger on the third string fourth fret, and I'm going to do these kind of rolls, banjo style rolls. And there's other places on um, my website and, and parts of my YouTube channel where you can I describe that in detail. But basically, roll through thumb, index, middle, ring, and then bring the thumb down on the third string. Then I'm going to go up to a F sharp diminished chord, which is just a, a, a little bit uh, up from that G7. G diminished, same, same shape as before as the F sharp diminished. And finally up to a new version of a G7. So this can be an effective way to navigate between two versions of G7. Essentially, this measure is dedicated to G7, but I'm using these diminished chords. to get back a way to navigate between the two G7s. So if I play that whole verse. Okay, now I've kind of worked my way up. I'm at the end, and this is the end of my first variation. And I'm going to go into my second variation, which I so leaving off from G7, I'm going back to C. So I'm going to do a version of C, which is pretty easy to get to from here, from this G7. I just bar at the fifth fret, move my pinky to the first string, uh, eighth fret. And I have what essentially is a smaller version of uh, a G shape chord. Another cage reference there. Here I'm going to strum the chord. And then I'm going to play the root note C on the 8th fret of the 6th string. Then go to an E7 chord, very much like the D7 I played before, based on a C shape but just playing the top four strings. And I do the same kind of strumming. Down, up, down, up, down. Hit a bass note on the seventh fret. Now I'm gonna to go to an A7 chord. This is based on an E shape. What I'm doing here is barring four strings. Got my middle finger on the third string, sixth fret, alternating my bass between fifth and fourth string, and then I'm adding notes to that shape: B, B flat, okay, so there's just playing around that A7 chord. Sorry. Then a D7 chord, also part of a G shape. If you looked at a uh, full shape, like looks like that. But I'm just going to bar at the seventh fret, four strings, middle finger on the first string, eighth fret. Basically, just walking back and forth between D7, D flat 7. Now, that's again a series of G chords, starting off with the G6 there, barring at the 10th fret, playing the 12th fret with my ring finger. Down, up, down. G7, G7, and another G7. 